This video was my second choice for an April Fools video, but I liked the craziness of the concept so much that I decided to make it into a full length video. The idea comes from Husavi Productions, who made a video called All Endings Germany. He concluded his video with this secret ending, where Germany is moved to Kazakhstan at the end of World War II. Now, obviously, this would never happen. This could never happen. This is an idea so insane, nobody would even consider it. So, what if it really happened? So first, we need to establish what this would entail. Well, we will go with the simplest answer. Germany, as a nation and a people, gets moved over to Kazakhstan. As a cruel joke, the Allied powers even give the new German nation enlarged borders, giving them not only their pre-World War I borders, but the borders of Austria, Czechia, and even the German occupation in Poland as well. For the sake of this proposal, the Austrians are also considered amongst the Germans, and thus will be moved as well, in the same way that they were occupied quite like Germany, even in our own timeline. Similarly, the German minorities of Belgium, France, Czechia, Poland and others will also be moved to Kazakhstan. With that established, the Allied powers meet up at Yalta and decide on what to do with Germany. The plan is simple. Ever since their founding, a unified Germany in Central Europe is too dangerous for the European balance of power. Their unified population count makes them the strongest European nation, while their modernization makes them capable of standing up to Russia. Reverting Germany to a pre-1870 divisions of states would also be possible, but practically difficult to divide between allied spheres of occupation, and it would require constant vigilance to prevent German reunification. So what if instead a more permanent solution was attempted? By moving Germany to Kazakhstan. As an added bonus, this would mean that the Soviets would get the task of policing and taking care of the now occupied Germans, something especially the broke British would be very fond of. Now by definition, this expulsion would be horrifying on the German people. There is not even close to enough infrastructure to safely transport 70 million people across a continent. But even once the Germans arrive, the entirety of Kazakhstan in 1945 had about 6.5 million people, if we assume that all Germans make the trip, the population of the region explodes by tenfold, and there is not even close to enough food, water, and especially shelter to take care of them all. So, in a best case scenario, with benevolent actors overseeing this plan, Germany would simply be occupied for a few years, if not decades, as the Soviets slowly build up the infrastructure and shelter needed to complete this program. But the Soviets are not benevolent actors, they are bitter. They have just gone through not just World War II, but only a generation before World War I, and in both conflicts the Germans completely devastated Russian heartlands. If, somehow, the Allies agree and decide to stick to this plan, the Soviets would necessarily have to be the ones to oversee it. The Allies would provide monetary and resource aid to the Soviets to ease their burden, but in the short term it would be nowhere near enough, and in the long term the reality of the Cold War sets in, and the West will either reduce their support or Stalin may just refuse it altogether. Now, any concrete number is impossible to predict, but I would predict that after the first decade of the expulsion, the journey itself and the harsh reality of millions of migrants moving to Kazakhstan, up to 75% of the German population could perish. Depending on Soviet attitudes towards the expulsion and how short the time frame set for this expulsion would be. It is very well possible that this expulsion of Germans would be one of the most deadly events in world history. This death count would shock the West and likely even the Soviet Union. Call it short-sightedness, call it idiocy, but there is no way that the Allied powers of World War II would have purposely signed up to a plan that would decimate the German population to this extent. Despite the West being, in large parts, just as responsible for the horrors of the expulsion, the West would try to place the blame squarely on the communist world, as it would become one of the first diplomatic incidents of the new Cold War. Internally, the Soviets would mostly try to keep the true extent of the horrors under wraps for their population, while partially justifying the devastation by emphasizing the destruction that the German people brought upon the Soviets. So now we have the Germans gone, and we have a very big question to answer. What do we do with all the Central European lands that are now empty? A popular concept in alternate history is to give the Jews their own state somewhere within German territory, and as Germany is now empty anyways, this would be the perfect time to do so. Still though, I disagree with the idea that any Jewish state would be founded within Europe, for the simple reason that the timing is too late. 
It would first take a while before the Germans would actually be moved from Germany itself, and in the meantime, many Jews had already departed to Palestine. When given the choice, I have no doubt that the Jews would prefer their religious holy land over any territory they could get in Germany. It is possible that two separate Jewish states get founded, one in Europe and one in Palestine, but this sounds very unpractical and would likely be unpopular as it would split the Jewish people anyways. But in terms of border changes I can predict, we still have the expansion of the Soviet Union into what is now Kaliningrad. Then, as the Soviets had taken significant Polish territories during World War II, Poland would, just like in our own timeline, be compensated with German territories. It is very well possible that Poland gets pushed all the way to the Elbe in this alternate timeline. Meanwhile, in Western Europe, two nations are happily clapping their hands. The Netherlands, even in our own timeline, had desires to annex large parts of Germany and expelling the Germans there. In our timeline, the Allies refused this plan, as the expelled Germans would need to be resettled and that would be very expensive. With the Germans already being expelled to Kazakhstan, this border expansion could very well happen. Then there is France, which after both World War I and World War II was intimately concerned with the German Rhineland and the resources of the region. The Rhineland had fueled much of Germany's industry, while by virtue of its location it had been the place from which Germany invaded France three separate times. After World War I, France had already hoped to strip the Rhineland from Germany, but this was considered too harsh by the other powers. With the German people now deported, however, France could finally achieve their dream and gain the Rhineland, setting up France as the next European industrial superpower. Then there is Yugoslavia, which under Tito wanted to annex this part of Austria, which had Slovenian minorities. Finally, in terms of historical claims on German lands, we have Denmark, which would likely be expanded into Holstein, both for historical reasons, as well as to ensure that Poland, and thus the communist world, does not get control over the Kiel Canal. With that, we have covered the historical and logical claims on German territory, but as you can see, there is still quite a bit of land to be divided. I am relatively confident about the changes I have made so far in terms of how likely they are to happen. But the remaining territories are far more difficult as there were no plans for these regions. But here are some possibilities for these remaining territories. It is somewhat possible that the British get to restore Hanover as a part of Britain. In our timeline, Britain didn't like that they had to occupy parts of Germany since this was very costly and they were broke, but with the Germans gone, so is the cost of occupation. A counterpoint to this, however, is that it would give the British, as part of NATO, a direct land border with the communist world, meaning that Britain would be on the front lines of the Cold War. Since Britain was broke, and they didn't really have much use for Hanover, it is also very well possible that Britain simply declines the annexation. Then we have France, again. The Rhineland would absolutely be their priority, but once it becomes clear that the rest of Germany is still up for grabs, I have no doubt that France would push for further land gains. How this would look is impossible to say, but by following some German rivers, this is what I would come up with. Next, I would consider giving Hungary some lands from Austria. After the World War I peace deal, Hungary, perhaps surprisingly, had to give land to Austria. And this would be the perfect opportunity to gain them back, which Stalin would support to strengthen the communist world. In a similar vein, we could see Tito deciding to push for even more land gains from Austria, and we might see Czechoslovakia gaining some German lands as compensation for occupation. But even now, after giving reasonable compensation to all of Germany's neighbors, we still have more lands to give out. I will leave it up to you how you want this land to be divided yourself. Maybe a Jewish state is set up here after all. Maybe this land is also carved up amongst the other European powers. But, since there were no real plans to carve Germany up to this extent, it's impossible to say. Even the most simple solution Creating independent states in these lands make no sense as there is no one left to inhabit them. Maybe a line is drawn in Germany which just becomes empty borderlands between the communist and capitalist worlds, but I highly doubt that. So this is my best guess as to the new map of Europe with a major question mark in the middle of formerly Germany. So what's next for history? Well, it's impossible to say, obviously, we just removed perhaps the most influential nation in Europe's modern history from the continent. But let's give it a shot. To start off with, I don't see a European Union happening in the same sense as it did in our own timeline. The seeds for the European Union were Franco-German partnership, fueled in large parts by French desires to prevent another invasion from Germany. The coal and steel community, the oldest ancestor of the European Union, 
was created in part so that France could have some oversight over the most crucial materials that Germany could use for war, coal and steel. Without Germany, Europe would still cooperate, but the balance is now disrupted. In our timeline, West Germany and France were the two dominant powers, with Italy not too far behind. Any European partnership in this alternate Western Europe would be very Franco-centric and thus likely unpopular with the other states. But even if there is never a formal institution to link Europe together, thanks to French control over the Rhineland, they would become the foremost power of Western Europe, the backbone of NATO strategy on the continent. In terms of the larger Cold War, very little has fundamentally changed, apart from the West having weakened themselves massively. The West, arguably, still got the more valuable land from Germany, but in our own timeline, they also got 50 million Germans, which willingly integrated itself into the Western world order. In our timeline, the early Cold War was also quite tense with Germany as a front line. The question of whether or not Germany should be rearmed and allowed into NATO was a major conflict, while the existence of West Berlin as an enclave within the Eastern Bloc was a major source of friction. With this alternate timeline seeing all nations getting any claim they could potentially legitimately have on Germany satisfied, and no two separate, ideologically opposed Germanys having an ideological standoff, we can expect the Cold War in Europe to be significantly calmer. Then, we obviously need to discuss Germany itself, all the way over in Kazakhstan. This is the most difficult aspect of this alternate history to predict anything about. We could have Germany, within Kazakhstan, become an integrated republic within the Soviet Union, but I think it's way more likely that the Germans get their own puppet government under Soviet control. This Germany, however, would likely be a massive resource sink for the Soviets, as while the Soviets may initially leave the Germans somewhat undersupplied, at some point the Soviets would have to ease their stance and allow Germany to integrate into the communist world. A big issue, however, is that there is likely not enough industrial work in the new German state, and much of the German lands are unsuitable for mass agriculture, making it difficult to turn the tens of millions of Germans into productive members of the communist world. All in all, this entire deal was a very bad one for the Soviets, who now need to prop up the Germans in Central Asia with food, water and other supplies while getting very, very little in return. As it's pretty much impossible to predict the exact details of the Cold War, I'm gonna skip the rest of it and move on to the fall of communism and a broadly defined modern era. I don't think that removing Germany would be enough to stop the general trajectories of the 20th century and while the details would most certainly be changed, I consider it very likely that eventually the communist world still collapses. But what happens next? Whatever happens, it would likely result in another catastrophic loss of life for the German people. Reliant as they were on Soviet aid, the collapse of the Soviets would likely result in a sudden German famine. The borders of the modern world would look something like this, with Kazakhstan itself having some of the worst borders ever invented. As communism collapses, also in Germany, it is likely that Germany follows the trend of the other Central Asian states, in turning to autocracy or authoritarian democracy. Especially as the Germans are undoubtedly bitter by the hardships that they endured by their expulsion and then their life under communist rule, I would consider it likely that Germany, which would possess the largest population in Central Asia, to become a militant power referring back to pre-expulsion German greatness. But even if Germany makes some waves in Central Asia, at the end of the day, this new Germany would be little more than an isolated backwater isolated from the rest of the world, likely to fall under Russian influence, becoming a pawn for power plays between China and Russia. A tragic fate compared to the prosperity and power that Germany still enjoys in our own timeline. The moving of Germany and the annexation of their lands would forever be a stain on the record of the Allied powers following the end of World War II. A cruel and frankly insane decision made by their leaders, leading to enormous loss of life, crippling both Kazakhstan and Germany, even until the modern day. Blame would be thrown around by all parties, but at the end of the day, they all contributed to the emergence of this frankly baffling state of affairs. But that's it for this video. I will thank you all for watching. Consider leaving a like and a comment to help the video grow against the algorithm and subscribe for two more videos every single week. And if you enjoyed the content, consider clicking one of the two videos on screen now. I'm sure you'll enjoy those as well. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.